This video will show you how to do certain types of word problems that use one variable. These word problems can be set up in some cases with two variables, but this is going to be the one variable method. When you read the problem, one number exceeds another by 24. The sum of the numbers is 58. What are the numbers? That tells you that we're going to have to name these variables, one number and another number. If we were going to do two variables, we could just call one x and one y, but we're going to use one variable here. So one of these phrases has to be what I call the plain old variable. And we have to go back to this sentence to decide who is the plain old variable. It says one number exceeds another by 24. We would need to know this other number first before we could figure out what they're calling the one number. So I'm going to call another number x. One number exceeds another by 24. That's Another way of saying that this one number is 24 more than that first number. So here's the two names for the variables that we have in the problem. Then we look at the next sentence which tells us the sum of the numbers is 58. So all we have to do is add these up because that's what sum means. So x plus 24 plus x equals 58 and we have a very simple equation to solve. I'm going to do two things at once here. Combine my like terms x plus x is 2x Subtract 24 from both sides gives me 34 here. Divide by 2 and x is 17. Now don't stop there because it says what are the numbers. Well if x is 17 we can go right back here where we named our variables and say x is 17. Plug 17 in for that x. 17 plus 24 is 41 and you can check that very easily. Add 41 plus 17 gives us the 58. The average salary for computer programmers is $7,740, less than twice the average salary for carpenters. Combined, their average salaries are $99,000. Determine the average salary for each of these jobs. Well, look at the problem. We're looking at computer programmers and we're looking at carpenters. So those are going to be the two words or phrases I use here. And then I'm going to use my variables here. One of these has to be the plain old variables. It says the average salary for computer programmers, yada, yada, yada. Something is told about computer programmers. You know nothing about the carpenters. That's where we begin, and that's who gets the x. We can go back to this sentence and write our expression. The average salary for computer programmers is, there's my is, 77.40 less than twice the average salary. Now remember less than is this thing that has to go to the back of the sentence. So twice the average salary minus 77.40. Common mistake is for students to write 77.40 minus 2x because that's how you read it. But if you want to make something 7700 less than it was before, you have to subtract 7700 from the 2x. So not this one. Then combined, which is another way of saying their sum, is 99,000. Just add these together. So 2x minus 7740 plus x equals 99,000. We have a simple equation to solve. I'll do two things. Add my like terms together. 2x plus x is 3x. Add 7740 to both sides, and I get 106,740. Divide both sides by 3, and x is 35,580. Now, that is my salary for carpenters, because that's who x was. So I'm going to plug this 3558 here for that x, and I will find out what the computer programmer is. That You can just type into your calculators two times, 35,580, subtract 7740, and it is 63,000. So this is your computer programmer answer. This is your carpenter answer. This one says you're choosing between two health clubs. Club A offers a membership fee of $40 plus a monthly fee of $25. That means $25 per month. Club B offers the membership fee of $15 plus a monthly fee of $30 per month. After how many months will the total cost at each health club be the same? Well, the two things we're looking at here are Club A and Club B, so let's name this here. This is a little different. It's not like the last two where one of these is X and then we write an expression for the other. We're going to write expressions for both of these because it says Club A is going to charge you $40 right off the bat. So it's going to be $40 plus your monthly fee. It's $25 per month 
which is 25 times x. Club B is a little different. You'd only be in charge $15 up front, but the monthly fee is $30 per month, and that's why that's 30x. Those are the names. It says, what will the after how many months will the total cost at each health club be the same? So same means set these two things equal to each other. So club A's price has to equal club B price. And this is our basic equation where we need to get x's on one side and numbers to the other. So subtract 25x from both sides gives you 5x over here. Subtract 15 from both sides gives you 25 here. Divide both sides by 5 and x equals 5 months, because that's what they were asking you. But they also ask you, what will the total cost be for each club? So you can take 5 and plug it into either one of these, because that's given us the total cost. So if I go right here, this is 15 plus 30 times 5, which you can type into your calculator, or if you're doing this by hand, 15 plus 150 is $165. After 5 months, that's how much you have paid at both clubs. After a 20% reduction, you purchase a television for $336. What was the TV's price before the reduction? There's a couple ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the equation way. What you have to think about is this. If there was a 20% reduction, that means you did not pay 20%. So you did pay 80%. And where this 80 comes from is the fact that 20 plus 80 is the total 100%. So our price paid, this 336 that we actually paid, represents 80% of the original price. And I can do a strict, straight translation right here. The price paid, which is 336, equals 80%, which has to be written as a decimal, 0.8 or 0.80. Of means times the original price. Do we know the original price? No, that's what we're looking for. Call that x. So to clean this up a little bit, it's just 336 equals 0.8x. Simple equation to solve. Divide both sides by 0.8 and X is $420. So that's what the price was of the TV set, the original price before that 20% reduction. Here's another one dealing with money in percents. Markup is the amount added to the dealer's cost of an item to arrive at the selling price. So when you buy something at the store, there was an original dealer cost, but of course he marked it up a certain amount so he could make a profit. So here's a little formula we will use to do markup problems. Markup plus dealer's cost equals selling price. The selling price of the refrigerator is 584. That's got to go right here. If the markup is 25% of the dealer's cost, you can't just put 25 here for markup. It's 25% of the dealer's cost. Of means times, so it's 0.25 times D, which is the dealer's cost using D here. So clean this up. This D is the same as 1D. 0.25 plus 1 is 1.25D equals 584. And we arrive at a really simple equation to solve. Divide both sides by 1.25. And D is 467.20. So that's what the dealer's cost was. And then he marked it up 25% to arrive at the selling price of $584. Interest, you probably have seen before that the interest formula is just simply I equals PRT and it translate as, you can find the interest as whatever money you started with times the rate times the time in years. But the time is not going to be a factor for us in this problem because it says if the total interest for the year, the year meaning one year, so we don't even have to worry about this. We have two different accounts. We're going to invest some at 6% and some at 8%. So we're back to these equations where we've got these two phrases that we need to translate. One of those is just x. I have no idea how much he put in that account. But in the other account, since he had a total investment of 7,000, the amount that went in the other account is just 7,000 minus x. You know, pretend he put 1,000 in this first account. 1,000 from 7,000 would be 6,000. And that's my total of 7,000. But of course, I'm just making these numbers up to give you an idea of where the formulas came from. So I need to compute the interest on each of these things. In this first account, I'll say that's the 6%. So x at 
would just be 0.06x. Remember to change a percent to a decimal, and you must change you must move the decimal point two places to the left. This is going to be the same thing at 8% though. So this is 0 0.08 times parentheses because this is a binomial 7,000 minus x. And these two amounts are going together to give me a total interest of 520. So my equation is 0.06x plus 0.08 times 7,000 minus x equals 520. 0.06x, distribute the 0.08, makes 560 minus 0.08x equals 520. Combining my like terms, 0.06x minus 0.08x is negative 0.02x. At the same time, I'll subtract 560 from both sides, which gives me negative 40. Divide both sides by negative 0.02, and x will be 2,000. And that's at 6%, because that's what my x was. That's x at, or 2,000 at 6%. And since the total was 7,000, this must be 5,000. And that's at the 8%. This is one, if you took prep math, that you've seen this before. This is one of these where we've got to identify the length and the width. Like the beginning problems today, one of these has to be the plain old variable. It says the length is yada, yada, yada. Since you know something about the length, that means the width has to be your plain old variable. Go back and write this translation. The length, the length is 6 feet longer, which is plus, twice the width. And then I always put these on the picture just because, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And you can use the perimeter formula if you want to memorize that, or you can just remember perimeter means the sum of all the sides. So all I have to do is add up all these sides in whatever order you want. I always just write them from top, right, bottom, left. So I have 6 plus 2w, that's my top, plus w, which is my right, plus 6 plus 2w, which is the bottom, plus w, which is the left, equals 228. Clean up this equation, add your like terms together, 2w plus w plus 2w plus w is 6w. 6 plus 6 is 12. Two-step equation, subtract 12 from both sides, gives us 216 here, divide both sides by 6, and w is 36. It says, what are the coach's coach dimensions? We need both the length and the width, so if w is 36, feet. Put 36 right in here, so you're looking at 6 plus 2 times 36. Type it in the calculator, and you're going to get 78 feet. A new car worth $24,000 is depreciating in value by $3,000 per year. We want to write a formula that models the car's value y in dollars after x years. That sounds complicated, but let's just look at some numbers to begin with. So it's worth $24,000 right now. One year goes by. To figure out what it's worth after one year, all we do is subtract $3,000. And to find out the next year, subtract $3,000 again. And the next year, subtract $3,000 again. Well, you're subtracting $3,000 every year so that this formula, y equals the 24000 that the car was worth in the beginning, take away a certain number of 3000s. Well, how many 3000s will there be? There'll be the number of 3000s will correlate to the number of years. So that's your formula for figuring out what the car is worth. Now it says use the formula to determine after how many years the car's value will be 9000. So you're putting 9000 in here, 24000 minus 3,000x, and solve that equation. Subtract 24,000 from both sides is negative 15,000 equals negative 3,000x. Divide both sides by negative 3,000, and x is five years. So it's going to take five years for this $24,000 car to depreciate to 9,000.